to assume this discipline, if it has not been conferred by circumstances, requires a personal activity of the will. The individual must settle down sometime, somewhere, and think this through for himself. Normally he will not do this except in a matter of emergency. Only after his life has been a series of difficulties is he impelled or inclined to consider the possibility of correcting the tendencies in his own nature which have made these difficulties not only possible, but inevitable. I've always been deeply impressed with the Buddhist doctrine of dependency. This is the doctrine that everything depends upon something that precedes it, that no action stands alone, and also that no action is without its own dependencies. Now, this cycle of dependency we sometimes refer to as the law of cause and effect. We recognize this law not because man has made it, but because it is obvious everywhere in the operations of nature. We may rebel against natural law, but we can never win this rebellion. Law will ultimately grind us back into conformity, sometimes at very difficult cost to ourselves. Dependency means that where we are now is the inevitable result of something that this something is not an accident or a mere unrelated incident. It is the unfolding of a way of life. The careless person, the thoughtless person, unfolds a way of life which becomes a monument to his carelessness and his thoughtlessness. And this monument must be like the cause which produced it. Therefore, carelessness results in carelessness, thoughtlessness in thoughtlessness. And so we go along until somewhere in this procedure, our weaknesses or our inadequacies catch up with us, and we come to some sorrowful and difficult emergency. This law of dependency also has a cheerful and more hopeful side. If man does cause order, he will enjoy order. There is no way in which he can escape either the good or that which is not good, resulting from himself. Whatever causes he sets in motion must inevitably bear their fruit. And our present state is unquestionably and undeniably the culmination of the factors of character and conduct which have proceeded today, and which will, to a measure, continue to flow into tomorrow, unless at this moment, here and now, we make some valid change in the circumstances. Man, however, because he has the power of volitional action, or has a consciously directed will energy, is capable of breaking pattern. He is capable of breaking away from weakness, he is capable of correcting that which is not good. He is also capable of compromises, which will lead to further complications. Thus, at any moment, the individual does have control of himself if he wishes to exert that control. 